Top 25 L1 Support Engineer Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly faced by L1 support engineers. These questions cover a range of technical skills, problem-solving abilities, and customer service scenarios relevant to the role. We will also provide detailed answers and tips to help candidates prepare effectively. Whether you are a seasoned professional or new to the field, this guide aims to enhance your interview readiness. 1. Can you describe the role of an L1 support engineer in the IT industry? An L1 support engineer serves as the first point of contact for users experiencing technical issues. Their primary responsibilities include diagnosing problems, providing solutions, and escalating complex issues to higher-level support teams. They utilize various tools for troubleshooting and maintain documentation of incidents and resolutions. Communication skills are vital, as they must explain technical concepts in an understandable manner. This role also requires a proactive approach to customer service, ensuring user satisfaction while working within defined service level agreements, SLAS. 2. What are the most common tools and technologies you have used for troubleshooting? In my experience as an L1 support engineer, I have utilized a variety of tools and technologies for effective troubleshooting. Commonly used tools include remote desktop applications like TeamViewer and Microsoft Remote Desktop, which allow me to access users' systems directly. Additionally, I frequently work with ticketing systems such as Zendesk and ServiceNow for tracking support requests. Diagnostic tools like Wireshark for network analysis and various command line utilities for system checks are also essential. Knowledge bases and documentation platforms help in finding solutions quickly and efficiently. 3. How do you prioritize multiple support requests that come in simultaneously? When faced with multiple support requests, I assess each request based on urgency and impact. High-priority issues that affect many users or critical business functions are addressed first. I also consider the severity of the problem for the individual user. To manage my workload efficiently, I categorize requests into tiers and use ticketing systems to track progress. Clear communication with users about expected response times is vital. If necessary, I escalate complex issues while ensuring that I maintain transparency about the status of their requests. 4. Explain how you would handle a situation where a customer is frustrated and upset about a technical problem. When faced with an upset customer, the first step is to actively listen to their concerns without interruption. Acknowledging their frustration is crucial, as it helps to validate their feelings. I would then express empathy and assure them that I am there to help. After clarifying the issue by asking relevant questions, I would provide a clear and concise explanation of potential solutions. Keeping the customer informed throughout the process is essential, as it demonstrates commitment to resolving their problem. Lastly, I would follow up after the issue is resolved to ensure their satisfaction and reassure them of continued support. 5. What is your troubleshooting process? My troubleshooting process begins with gathering detailed information about the issue from the user, including any error messages and the context in which the problem occurred. Next, I reproduce the problem to understand its scope. After that, I analyze the situation by checking logs, configurations, and settings relevant to the issue. I use systematic testing to isolate the root cause and develop potential solutions. Once a solution is identified, I implement it and verify that the problem is resolved. Finally, I document the process and solution for future reference, ensuring the user is informed throughout the process. 6. How do you ensure you fully understand a customer's problem before resolving it? To ensure I fully understand a customer's problem, I begin by actively listening to their description of the issue. I ask clarifying questions to gather all necessary details, such as the circumstances under which the problem occurred and any error messages they may have encountered. I often paraphrase their explanation back to them to confirm my understanding. Additionally, I strive to empathize with their situation, which helps build rapport. If needed, I may request screenshots or logs to gain deeper insight, ensuring I have a complete picture before attempting a resolution. 7. What steps do you take to document support issues and resolutions? Documenting support issues and resolutions is crucial for maintaining a knowledge base and ensuring consistent service. I start by recording the customer's details, the nature of the problem, and any troubleshooting steps taken. I use a ticketing system to log this information, which includes timestamps and relevant screenshots if applicable. After resolving the issue, I detail the solution, including any changes made and preventive measures suggested. This documentation helps future engineers address similar problems efficiently and serves as a reference for training new team members. 8. Can you explain DNS to a non-technical person? DNS, which stands for Domain Name System, is like the phone book of the internet. When you want to visit a website, you type in a web address, such as www.example.com. However, computers communicate using numerical IP addresses. DNS translates the web address into the IP address so your device can connect to the right server and load the website. It helps simplify our online experience by allowing us to use easy-to-remember names instead of complicated numbers. Essentially, DNS ensures you reach the site you're looking for without needing to memorize numerical addresses.
9. What is your experience with remote desktop technologies, e.g. TeamViewer, Microsoft Remote Desktop? I have extensive experience using remote desktop technologies, particularly TeamViewer and Microsoft Remote Desktop. These tools have been invaluable for assisting users in troubleshooting technical issues directly on their machines. With TeamViewer, I've conducted remote sessions to resolve software installations and configuration problems. Microsoft Remote Desktop has enabled me to access servers and provide support to colleagues efficiently. Both tools enhance communication, reduce resolution times, and allow for real-time guidance, which is essential in delivering effective support. 10. How do you keep your technical knowledge up to date? Keeping technical knowledge up to date involves a combination of continuous learning and practical experience. I regularly follow industry blogs, subscribe to relevant newsletters, and participate in online forums to stay informed about the latest trends and technologies. Attending webinars, workshops, and conferences also helps deepen my understanding. Additionally, I take online courses to learn new skills and gain certifications in emerging technologies. Engaging with peers in the IT community allows me to exchange knowledge and best practices, ensuring I remain proficient in my role. 11. Describe a time when you needed to collaborate with other teams to resolve a customer issue. In my previous role, I encountered a situation where a customer faced a complex issue with their software integration that required input from both the development team and the network team. After gathering all relevant information from the customer, I organized a joint meeting with both teams to discuss the problem. By sharing insights and expertise, we identified a misconfiguration in the network settings that was causing the integration failure. This collaborative approach not only resolved the customer's issue promptly but also helped establish better communication channels among teams for future challenges. 12. What strategies do you use to communicate technical information to non-technical customers? Effective communication with non-technical customers involves simplifying complex concepts. I start by using analogies or relatable examples to illustrate technical issues. Additionally, I avoid jargon and use plain language, ensuring the customer feels comfortable. Visual aids like diagrams can help clarify processes. I always encourage questions, fostering an open dialogue to ensure understanding. Checking for comprehension by asking the customer to paraphrase the information can also gauge their grasp of the subject. Finally, I follow up with written summaries to reinforce the discussion. 13. What do you do if you do not know the answer to a customer's question? When faced with a question I can't answer, I first acknowledge the customer's inquiry and assure them that I will find the information they need. I avoid guessing or providing inaccurate information. Instead, I take the time to research the issue or consult with colleagues who may have more expertise. I make sure to communicate clearly with the customer about the steps I'm taking and provide a timeframe for when they can expect a follow-up. This approach builds trust and demonstrates my commitment to resolving their issue effectively. 14. Can you explain the difference between proactive and reactive support, and which do you prefer? Proactive support focuses on identifying and resolving issues before they affect the customer, often involving monitoring systems and implementing preventive measures. Reactive support, on the other hand, is response-driven, dealing with problems as they arise. I prefer proactive support because it enhances customer satisfaction and reduces downtime. By anticipating potential issues, I can implement solutions that lead to smoother operations and fewer disruptions. This approach fosters trust and strengthens relationships with customers, ultimately benefiting the organization as well. 15. How do you manage your time effectively with high volumes of support tickets? Managing time effectively in a high-volume support environment requires prioritization and organization. I start by categorizing tickets based on urgency and complexity, addressing critical issues first to minimize downtime for customers. Utilizing ticketing systems helps track progress and ensures no ticket is overlooked. Time-blocking specific periods to focus solely on ticket resolution minimizes distractions. Regularly reviewing ticket statuses allows for adjustments to priorities as needed. Additionally, collaborating with teammates can distribute workload, ensuring that all tickets are handled efficiently while maintaining quality support. 16. What metrics do you think are important to track in support engineering, and why? Tracking key metrics in support engineering is essential for evaluating performance and enhancing service quality. Important metrics include first response time, which measures how quickly a support engineer acknowledges a ticket, and resolution time, indicating how long it takes to resolve an issue. Customer satisfaction scores reflect the effectiveness of support interactions. Ticket volume helps understand workload trends, while escalation rate indicates how often issues require higher-level intervention. Monitoring these metrics allows teams to identify areas for improvement, optimize processes, and ensure customer needs are met effectively. 17. Describe a challenging technical problem you faced and how you solved it. One challenging technical problem I encountered involved a network outage affecting multiple users in different locations. The issue was intermittent, making it difficult to diagnose. I began by gathering data from affected users and analyzing network logs for patterns. Collaborating with the networking team, we identified a misconfigured router causing packet loss. 
We implemented a corrective configuration and monitored the network closely. Communication with users was key throughout the process, keeping them informed of progress and ensuring their concerns were addressed promptly. This experience enhanced my troubleshooting skills significantly. 18. What is your experience with ticketing systems such as Zendesk or ServiceNow? I have extensive experience using ticketing systems like Zendesk and ServiceNow, which are essential for managing support requests efficiently. In my previous role, I utilized Zendesk to track and prioritize issues, ensuring timely responses to customers. I appreciated its user-friendly interface and automation capabilities, which helped streamline processes. With ServiceNow, I engaged in incident management and change requests, collaborating closely with various teams. Both platforms allowed me to generate reports and gain insights into support trends, ultimately improving service delivery and customer satisfaction. 19. How do you handle feedback or criticism from customers or team members? Handling feedback or criticism involves maintaining a calm and open mindset. I actively listen to the feedback without interrupting, ensuring I fully understand the concerns raised. I express gratitude for the input, as it provides an opportunity for growth and improvement. After processing the feedback, I reflect on it and identify actionable steps to address the issues highlighted. If necessary, I follow up with the person who provided the feedback to discuss what changes I plan to implement. This approach fosters a positive relationship and promotes a culture of continuous improvement. 20. What do you believe are the key qualities that make a successful support engineer? A successful support engineer exhibits strong communication skills, allowing them to convey technical information clearly. Problem-solving abilities are crucial, enabling them to diagnose issues efficiently. Empathy helps in understanding customer frustrations, ensuring they feel heard and valued. Adaptability is essential in a constantly evolving tech landscape, as new tools and challenges arise. Additionally, a proactive attitude fosters continuous learning and improvement, helping engineers stay updated on the latest technologies and best practices, ultimately leading to enhanced support experiences for customers. 21. Can you provide an example of how you have improved a support process or workflow in your previous role? In my previous role, I identified that our ticket resolution time was longer than desired due to inefficient communication between support tiers. I proposed a centralized knowledge base that included common issues and resolutions, which all team members could access. I organized training sessions to familiarize the team with this resource, allowing them to resolve issues more quickly. As a result, we saw a 30% reduction in ticket resolution time and improved customer satisfaction scores, as clients received faster responses and solutions. 22. Are you aware of the latest processors? Can you discuss any differences between them? Yes, I stay updated on the latest processors. Current processors, such as Intel's 13th Gen and AMD's Ryzen 7000 series, exhibit significant advancements. Intel processors focus on hybrid architecture, combining performance and efficiency cores, which optimizes multitasking and power consumption. AMD's Ryzen series emphasizes high core counts and superior multi-threaded performance, appealing to content creators and gamers alike. Additionally, power efficiency and integrated graphics capabilities have improved, offering better performance per watt ratios. Understanding these differences helps tailor solutions based on customer needs effectively. 23. How do you perform root cause analysis in support engineering? Root cause analysis, RCA, in support engineering involves systematically identifying the underlying issues that lead to recurring problems. First, I gather data from affected systems and user reports to understand the symptoms. Next, I utilize techniques such as the five whys or fishbone diagrams to analyze the data and trace the problem back to its source. Collaboration with relevant teams is essential, as it brings diverse perspectives to the issue. Once the root cause is identified, I document the findings and implement corrective actions to prevent recurrence, ensuring continuous improvement in the support process. 24. What role does empathy play in your interactions with customers? Empathy is crucial in customer interactions as it helps establish trust and rapport. When customers feel understood, they are more likely to express their concerns openly. By actively listening and acknowledging their feelings, I can better identify the root of their issues and provide tailored solutions. Demonstrating empathy also means being patient and supportive, especially when customers are frustrated. This approach not only enhances the customer experience but also fosters loyalty, as clients appreciate being treated as valued individuals rather than just support cases. 25. How do you ensure you provide accurate and timely information to customers? To provide accurate and timely information to customers, I start by actively listening to their concerns and clarifying any uncertainties. I make use of reliable documentation and knowledge bases to ensure the information I provide is correct. When responding, I prioritize clarity and conciseness, avoiding jargon that may confuse the customer. I also keep track of follow-ups and ensure that I adhere to promised timelines. Regularly updating my knowledge on internal processes and tools helps me deliver the most relevant solutions quickly. In this video, we've explored the top 25 interview questions and answers for L1 support engineer positions, 
equipping you with the knowledge to excel in your next interview. Understanding these key concepts and practicing your responses will boost your confidence and increase your chances of landing the job. Remember, preparation is essential in making a great impression. If you found this information helpful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more valuable content. Your support helps us continue to provide resources that aid in your career growth. Thank you for watching.